we, we often talk about the realities of Biden's age as it pertains to whether it's I, I just say, is it reckless or not to have this guy as president? But there's a there's a corollary to this. And, and put aside some of you who are saying he's not going to be the guy, including I wouldn't you're not quite there, but you're you're like, what, 70, 30 in that range, maybe. Well, you you, so- you tell me. Yeah, so we had a good discussion yesterday. So we talked to Bill O'Reilly last week. We talked to Jesse Kelly yesterday. He, he is vociferous in that it still will not be Biden, which is a bold, that's bold stuff from Bill at this stage. So if it's not going to be Biden, my thing is I can't imagine that they want it to be Kamala. So we talked a little bit about this yesterday, and, and this is where, Buck, I think timing becomes so integral. If it's not going to be Biden... I think Biden has to announce sometime around by Labor Day, hey, I'm not like Lyndon Johnson style. I will not accept and I will not be the nominee because then they can have an actual primary. If he announces next year, it's basically deputizing Kamala as the choice. And she's a worse candidate than Biden is. So, So here's here's my thesis on this. For anyone who thinks it won't be Biden. It's not going to be Biden and put aside whether, you know, just just assume for the purpose of conversation that he can beat whoever the Republican nominee is. And the polls are showing, you know, the big, big lead that Trump has right now. Big, big lead. Okay, But I'm saying I don't think that Joe Biden stays as president until even the midterms. And that's a much smarter play for Democrats. They can effectively run him as the guy who they all implicitly yeah. know. And l- let me get into why I'm thinking this. Corinne Jean-Pierre, this isn't just coming out of thin air, everybody. She was asked yesterday, would Joe Biden be able to complete a second term play 23? This is a president. If you look at what he's been able to do, he has been able to push forward and get done historic pieces of legislation. He has gotten more done than any other president. The vice president has been a partner. It has been a partner to this president. You've seen her do that out there on the road or whether it's even here speaking to different issues that are incredibly important to the American people. So, Clay, this reminds me a little bit, you know, Sometimes we'll have like a sweet treat in the house, you know, maybe some like uh, some cake or something. If 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 my wife asked me, did you did you eat the last of the cake? And my response is, well, I love freedom in America, honey, and <laughs> I'm focused on saving the country. You know, a total non answer becomes its own form of answer. Yeah. And when you have Corinne Jean-Pierre being asked clearly, would Biden be able to complete a second term? Nobody thinks he'd be able to complete a second term. So what I'm saying is I think it's baked into the cake, if you will, the perception that it's just Biden passing the torch after the 2024 election to Kamala, who gets to become the president without having to run to be the president. I, I think that is a really interesting take. And I don't necessarily disagree with it because then it also allows Biden for his legacy to be. What did he want his legacy to be on the Supreme Court? I'm going to make a black woman the first Supreme Court justice. He pledged That's it right. when he was running in uh, the spring of 2020 in South Carolina. This way he steps down and the first woman president, who also happens to be a minority, is doing so at his uh, at his behest, right? Because he's stepping aside and letting her go there. Here is also what we should know about the Corinne Jean-Pierre that you just played. She's been asked this question before. She previously has not been able to say that he would serve his full term. In fact, and this goes for the crew, we got him scrambling on a lot of different issues today. I believe she was asked on the day that Joe Biden announced he would be running for re-election when he put up that video, Will Joe Biden pledge that he will complete his whole second term? And she also didn't answer it then. So she has had opportunity. It was a poor answer. I remember it getting a lot of attention because if I remember correctly, it was either the day that they announced or the day after, and it got a lot of media attention, kind of uh, you know, a rain, a rain cloud on what should have been a sunny day. She's now had, whatever it is, three or four more months yeah. be able to make this decision and answer the question better, and she still can't do it. So that is potentially a giveaway. The only thing that I would add here, Buck, is Corinne Jean-Pierre is fine lying. So 
I don't understand why she wouldn't just say, yes, the president's going to serve out his full term because he could always say, my health has deteriorated to the point that I can no longer do it. Right? There's a lot of exit ramps if he were to win re-election that would allow him to have a different answer in 2026 I, than it would be today. I think that the idea is you don't want, as the White House press secretary, to even have clear audio of you saying, no, 84-year-old Joe Biden as president would be a great thing who is clearly mentally sharp and up for the task. We have total confidence in him. There are some lies that sound so bad when they're said they're not worth saying at all. You know what I mean? So that's why I think the evasion is the preferred route, because to eat, to, to say back to somebody that Joe Biden is in great shape and everything's going to be fine, they're not they're not convincing anyone. So I think they're going to avoid it. Nikki Haley. But they said it about Fetterman and didn't seem to care at all when we all realized what a lie it was, which is why I just think they're willing to lie on a level that we've never seen before. Right. If you were willing to tell us, Buck, Fetterman's great. He's going to be a fabulous senator. And then we watch the debate and then the dude has to check himself into a uh, into hospital as soon as he gets there. They just don't care. Well, you got to but you got to remember the timing of it. They were trying to at least get in because in Pennsylvania, and we we brought this up yesterday, the Democrat machinery kicks the Republican machinery's butt yes. in that state. They're better at this. They are better funded, better organized, better planning. They know how to get the votes where they need them, when they need them. The GOP is like, but the Constitution, Election yeah. Day. It's like, yeah, that's yeah. not going to get it done in uh, Pennsylvania. They wanted to at least rack up as many votes for Fetterman as early as they could. And my understanding is I think Pennsylvania is one of those states where in the early voting, they were targeting the low propensity voters. So they're trying to get let, let's get in a lot of because as it gets closer to Election Day, then you can push for people that you're expecting to vote anyway to kind of bring it home. But in those early weeks, I believe, and you know, there's a lot of states and a lot of different strategies. The Democrat approach is let's get as many low propensity as possible. So for those low propensity voters, keeping that lie going even for a few weeks maybe was a difference maker. Buck, to your point, you're 100 percent right. They had over 50 percent of the vote in before the debate even happened. I mean, think about how much of a machine that is. Over half of the Fetterman votes were already in before anybody had to actually see him speak. That is a rig job. Yeah, and that's exactly what their plan was all along. I should note that uh, that we mentioned Vice President Pence, uh, f- former Vice President Pence, uh, is officially running. And uh, we have, so now it's Senator Scott, Pence, uh, Vivek, and Nikki Haley, and then, of course, Trump and DeSantis. Uh, but here's what Nikki Haley said about Joe Biden whether he would finish out his term. Play 22. Let's be very clear. If they think it's going to be President Biden, a vote for President Biden is actually a vote for President Harris. We are running against Kamala Harris. Make no bones about it. Every liberal knows it. They know that it's Kamala Harris that's going to end up being president of the United States if Joe Biden wins this election. I think that's true. I'm not sure that everyone sees it that way. Right. But you are actually going to get a... Kamala presidency after a Biden election. And I do believe everybody needs to be hearing that a lot because that is it's obvious that's what they're going to do. It's obvious that's what's going to happen.